before we look at how to convert radicals, let's just deal with uh, some of the terminology that that um, we need to talk about when working with radicals. So a radical is what we call this whole thing here. This is the radical. And the radical is the entire root and yet the number underneath the square root, this number eight here, what we're taking the root of, we call the radicand. The radicand is the number under the root sign or under the radical sign. And then the little number that you see up here is what we call the index of the radical. And what the index is, is it tells us what root we are to take. Now normally when you see a square root, you might just see the question written like this. If there is no number written up in the top left corner, in other words no index, then it's assumed to be a square root, since most of the time we are square rooting. So we've seen this before, that the second root, or the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4. But we can also do a question like this, what is the cubed root of 8? So what we are looking for now is some number that when we multiply it by itself three times, we end up with 8. Well, I think you can you could see very quickly that the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And we could do the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 64 is 4. Why? Because 4 times 4 times 4 would be 64. We can do really any index we like, although the numbers start to get very big. Um, for instance, the fourth root of 16. So we're looking for a number that when we multiply it by itself four times, we get 16 would be 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2, 4, 8, 16 is 16. So those are some terminologies. The radical is the uh, entire uh, uh, operation that we're dealing with. It includes the radicand, which is the number under the root sign, and it includes the index, which tells us uh, what root we are to take. And then there's a couple other terms that we need to be familiar with. One is an entire radical, and the other one is a mixed radical. And I think they're fairly straightforward in terms of what they represent. An entire radical means that the number is entirely underneath the radical sign. So root 56 is entirely expressed as a number underneath the radical sign. Whereas a mixed radical has a coefficient in front. So this really means four times the square root of seven. So we have a coefficient in front of the, the uh, root sign. That's a mixed radical. An entire radical, we have the entire number underneath the, s the square root sign in this case. So what we're going to look at now is how do we take a number like root 56 and write it as a mixed radical, and how can we take a mixed radical and express it as an entire radical. So what we're going to do first is we'll look at an entire radical like root 56 and convert it to a mixed radical. So how to convert an entire radical to a mixed radical. Let's take a look at that, 1 the square root of 56. There's a couple of ways we can do this. One method would be is that we understand that we cannot take the square root of 56. We just cannot do that. But is there a part or is there a factor of 56 that we can take the square root of? We know we can square root 4, we can square root 9, we can square root 16, we can square root 25, 36, and so on. It looks like 56, I could write this as 4 times 14. 4 times 14 is 56. So I can't square root 56, but I can square root part of it. I can square root the 4, which is a factor of 56. And so I can write this now as the square root of 4 times the square root of 14. And the square root of 4 I know is 2, 
So it's 2 times the square root of 14. I cannot square root 14, and none of these perfect squares go into 14. So I can write this as 2 root 14. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the square root of 18. We can't square root 18, but can we divide 18 by any of these numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36, and so on? Yes, we can write eight, root 18 as the square root of 9 times 2. And so I can square root part of 18. I can square root the 9, which is 3. And the part that I could not square root was the root 2. So we can write the square root of 18 as 3 root 2. Now this method works fine for numbers that are fairly small because we can see these numbers go into them quite quite quickly. But what if we were asked to find what's the square root of 256? Or even tougher, how about we did 242? You might not want to try to figure out all the numbers that go into 242. So I'll show you another, another method. Another method is to take the number 56 and do a factor tree. So I know I can divide 56 by 2. That leaves 28. I know I can divide 28 by 2. That leaves 14. And 14 I can divide by 2 and that leaves 7. So I'm just going to circle all the numbers at the end of my branches here. So I have prime factorized the number 56. So I could say then that the square root of 56 is the same thing as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 would give me 56. And here's the little story that I like to tell. This square root sign here is the house. This is the roof of the house. And inside the house we have a bunch of numbers. And these numbers would like to go outside of the house and play. But before they go outside they need to find themselves a buddy. So number two here, he's looking for a buddy and he finds one. There's another buddy inside the house. They can go outside and play. But when they go outside the house, if there's two numbers written here, we only write it as one number outside the house. Really what we're doing is 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So you see a pair of numbers inside, write one of them outside, outside of the house. So two numbers inside, one number outside. Now two, there's another 2 left in here, but he doesn't have any buddies left to play with. And neither does the number 7, so they're stuck inside the house. And 2 times 7 is 14. So root 56 is 2 root 14. Let's try another one. Let's try the square root of 90. Well, on the side over here, I'm going to do my factor tree for 90. Uh, 9 times 10. 9 is 3 and 3. 10 is 2 and 5. So there would be my prime factors for the square root of 90. It would be the square root, and I'm going to write them from smallest to largest. So I have 1, 2, I have two threes, and I have a 5. So in the, inside the house, 2 looks for a buddy, can't find one. 3 looks for a buddy, finds one. So outside, I'm going to put a 3, and the numbers left do not have any buddies. They have to stay inside the house. So the square root of 90 is equal to 3 root 10. I want to write that as a mixed radical. Let's look at one more example. The square root of 1260. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to try to find perfect squares that go into it. Um, as you get good at that method, you you'll no doubt be able to, to do it fairly quickly, but I'm just going to quickly do a factor tree. I know I can divide it by 2, 630. I can still divide it by 2, 315. Uh, I can divide it by 3, 
105. I can divide it by 5 again. Um, uh, what am I getting here? 21, sorry. And uh, 21 I can divide by 3 and get 7. And so the square root of 1260 becomes 2 times 2. And then I've got two threes, and I've got a five, and I've got a seven. And when you get into really large numbers like this, you might want to just check when you multiply all this out that you do indeed get 1,260. So now it's, it's time to see who gets to go outside and play. Two finds a buddy, so we're going to put a two outside. Three finds a buddy, we're going to put a three outside. Five has no buddy, seven has no buddy. So when a 2 comes out and a 3 comes out, those get multiplied together. We now have a 6 out front. Brought the 2 out, brought a 3 out, 2 times 3 is 6. And inside the house is 5 times 7, which is 35. So let's summarize again how we would convert an entire radical to a mixed radical. We would, uh, first thing we would do is we'd create a factor tree. That's what we did right here with 12... 160, and we would list the radicand as a product of prime factors. So we took the radicand, 1260, and we listed it as a product of its prime factors. And then any pairs of factors were brought outside of the radicand, and the two inside the house was worth one outside. So we had two twos inside, there was one two outside, two threes inside, one three outside. And then finally, the last step was the numbers outside of the radicand were multiplied and the numbers inside of the radicand were multiplied. So that number they brought out, the 2 and the 3, we multiplied them together to get 6. And the two numbers left inside the radicand, the 5 and the 7, we multiplied them to get 35. So that's how we convert an entire radical to a mixed radical.